So far, we have been writing programs that are rather static. That is, they're going to do the same thing every time. In this example, I have it saying, hello, Eric. And every time I run this program, it's going to say exactly the same thing. Now, we did sort of get some interesting output from the libraries tutorial where I use the random number library, but it's still doing the same thing every time. It is always going to print out a random number. And while this is useful, we often want our programs to be able to respond to some sort of user input. Fortunately, in Python, that is very easy. So I can, instead of saying, hello, Eric, I can say hello to whoever is using the program. And all I need to do is before this, I'm going to create a variable called name. And I'm going to set it equal to a function. And that function is going to be input. So the input function takes some sort of input from the user and saves it into this variable. Then I can add that here. And what this is doing is merging these two strings in a process called string concatenation. And concatenating strings just means you are pushing these two strings together. So one string plus another string equals one big string that contains both. So if I run this, it's going to wait for me to give some input and I'll say Eric. And it says, hello, Eric. And this is great, but when you actually run the program and it just stops here, it's not perfectly clear that we're supposed to type in our name. It would be better if this input would prompt us for what it's looking for. So I can come over here and in the input function, I can give a parameter that is, what is your name? And I'm putting a little space after it for formatting. You'll see that in a second. When I run the program, it asks, what is your name? And I can type in Eric. And you can see there's that little space. So putting a space at the end of the prompt makes it look a little nicer when you actually run it. So I give my input of Eric. We run it. And it says, hello, Eric. So now I can prompt the user for some sort of input. They can respond. And it will merge that response into my output. We can also get the user to specify things other than words, so numbers, for instance. So I can change this to, how old are you? And we'll change the variable to age, and we'll add age, and say, you are age years old. And if we run this, I'll put in the age of 26, and it says I am 26 years old. But this is a bit misleading, because this 26 is not stored in the computer as a number. It is stored as a string. And I can prove this by saying print age plus 20. So when I run this, you'll see that I get an error message. I am 26. And it says it can only concatenate a string, not an integer, to a string. So the problem is that age is saved as a string. So the response from input is always going to be a string. And when I try and add the number 20 to the string, Python doesn't know what to do with that. So what I actually need to do is convert age to a number. And since I know that that number is not going to have any decimal points, I can put this in parentheses and use the function int. And that will convert your string to an integer. So we'll save this and run it again. I have 26. And you see it prints out 46. So if you want to work with numbers as input, you need to explicitly convert them to numbers. And if I want my input to be more precise, that is to have decimal points, I need to change this to a float, a floating point number. That is to say it has a decimal. So now I can say I am 26.5 years old, and I'll get 46.5. If I did not convert this to a floating point number, so let's turn it back to an int, and I gave the input 26.5, you'll see that I get an error because it needs to be a floating point number in order to handle that decimal. One last thing I want to show you 
is that this int function, I can actually move somewhere else in the program. If I know that my user is going to give me an integer, I can do it here. And this is embedding one function within another. And it runs the inner function first. So the first thing that happens is that it will prompt me for my age. I will give my age, and it will return that value as a string. But that returned string gets immediately passed into the outer function, which will then convert it to an integer. And then it will print my age plus 20. So if we save that, you'll see that this does largely the same thing. I am 26. Now this is a rather dangerous thing to do because the user is likely to put in something that can't be converted to an integer. So it could ask how old I am and I could say Eric and it will break the program. Later on, I'll show you some ways to handle this to make it so that this command is less prone to breaking. But for now, just know that converting it to an integer right off the bat can be dangerous depending on who's using the program and how likely they are to put in the wrong information. So if this video was useful for you, please leave a like. It helps me grow the channel and it will help other people find the video. And again, if you would like to see these tools used in a broader context, I recommend checking out my Developer Diary series where I am working long term on big projects and actually putting these tools to use. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.